This is the lecture for Jennifer Ullman's External Freedom and Kant's Reclera, Political, Metaphysical. Uh, and there's basically only one topic to talk about near the beginning of the article and a bit near the end too, and then somewhat throughout. She talks about uh, some stuff in Kant, uh, which has also come up a little bit in some of the other readings and in some of the Kant, but it will help to get it more uh, explicit for this reading. So uh, she's talking about freedom uh, and external freedom and what this means, and one of the questions she's interested in is sort of how it relates to freedom as Kant talks about it in his other works. And uh, as she points out, uh, she says, in every Kantian context, uh, freedom in every Kantian context is incompatible with being an object in nature. That is, with being a spatio-temporal object of experience. We know this story well in the case of the will. For Kant, the only kind of will truly free from determination by nature is a non-stasio-temporal, noumenal will, one that is transcendentally free. Kant believes that such freedom of the will is required for a meaningful notion of moral choice and moral responsibility. So there are some terms here like non-spatio-temporal, noumenal, transcendental, uh, which we want to get out onto the table explicitly. So. We're going to start with the distinction between noumena and phenomena, or uh, uh, noumenal things and phenomenal things, or the noumenal realm and the phenomenal realm. So phenomena, or the phenomenal realm, or phenomenal objects, are uh, sort of everyday objects of experience. So everything in the world as we see it, uh, these are all phenomena. Uh, so all of your experiences are experiences of phenomena. And uh, all of science investigates phenomena. So when we figure out scientific laws, like the law of gravity or things like this, these are laws that apply in the phenomenal world. They apply to phenomenal objects. In other words, they apply to spatiotemporal objects, spatiotemporal stuff. The phenomenal world is governed by spatiotemporal laws. So everything that happens in the phenomenal world happens according to the laws of nature, the laws that science discovers, according to Kant. So this is how things work. But Kant thinks, this is, thinks, Kant believes, this is not the only sort of stuff going on. Uh, the phenomenal realm is not a complete description of the world. There is also, there are also noumena, not just phenomena, but noumena, or there is the noumenal realm or uh, the, the noumenal way of describing things. And what is up with noumena? Like, what are noumena? Kant thinks we don't actually have access to the noumenal realm or to noumenal objects or to things noumenally speaking. So you can't actually say anything about noumena. So I can tell you all sorts of stuff about phenomena. I can tell you which objects exist. I can tell you the laws that govern them. I can tell you quite a bit, but uh, science can't investigate noumena, nothing else can investigate noumena, it's just sort of, uh, it, because it's not the world as it appears to us, we don't have any access to these things. So you might think, okay, well, no use bothering to talk about the noumena, in fact, I don't even know why I should think the noumena exist if I have no evidence that they exist, if I can never know anything about them, what use are they, what can we say about them? And that's what's where we get transcendental stuff, so transcendental arguments, or Kant's sort of transcendental philosophy. Uh, it's known as transcendental idealism. So what Kant thinks is that although we can't know anything about the noumenal realm, we can assume certain things about it, and in fact we must assume certain things about it. There are certain things about the phenomenal realm which require that we assume or presuppose certain things about the phenomenal realm. So for instance, cause and effect. Uh, every effect has a cause. Is that something we discover in the phenomenal realm? Kant thinks, no, you can't prove that with science. Science can prove that each particular effect has some particular cause, but science can't prove like the law of cause and effect or other sort of logical laws or anything like that. However, you must presuppose the law of cause and effect or else nothing is going to work. You can't do any science if you don't think cause and effect is going to work and stuff like this. 
So Kant thinks there are certain things that we have to assume about the noumena or about the noumena realm, even though we can never know or prove anything about them. We have to presuppose these things. And these are known as transcendental arguments. So there's transcendental uh, deductions of certain things that we must assume to be the case about the noumena realm. Now, is all of this relevant to us? Well, Kant thinks free will is, number one, incompatible with what we see in the phenomenal realm. So he thinks free will is incompatible with, for instance, determinism, all the laws of physics. Why? Well, look, the laws of physics sort of determine everything that happens just according to like cause and effect and particles bumping into each other. But that means everything that you do, everything your body does, everything your brain does, that's all sort of set into motion by the laws of nature that happen you know, long before you were born, you, you have no control over any of that. And so Kant thinks, speaking just phenomenally, speaking just as we appear sort of scientifically, humans just operate like robots, like cause and effect, uh, you know, stimulus comes in, action happens. And so we have no free will, sort of phenomenally speaking. But Kant thinks in order to even make sense of your actions at all as a human being, you must presuppose that you have free will. It's in fact impossible to act as if you are a machine. Uh, you know, you can try it sometimes. So try to act as if you're not in control of your actions, as if you're not in charge of your actions. It's It can be very difficult. And so Kant thinks, even though phenomenally there's no evidence of free will, we must presuppose in order to act, in order to do anything, in order to live, we must presuppose that we have free will. And so we must presuppose that in the noumenal realm, we are not bound by these sort of spatiotemporal laws of physics. In the noumenal realm, we must be sort of making free decisions. Can we know this? No, but we have to presuppose it. You have no other option. So that's the kind of freedom that is most relevant to Kant. That's freedom of the will. And uh, that's sort of going on in the background here. And so that's what she's starting with. And then she's going to say in this article, well, it's kind of weird. If that's the freedom that Kant is talking about, how does that relate to external freedom of the sort that we're reading about in this class? Because this sort of free will and noumena realm, what, what in the world does that have to do with politics? How does that match up with what's going on here? So that's um, the basic notion of freedom that Kant has. And then even more broadly, the basic notion of this sort of uh, distinction between noumena and phenomena and sort of transcendental arguments about which we have to presuppose certain things in noumena even though we can never prove anything because uh, the only access we have is to the world of phenomena, the realm of phenomena.